Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to look at how to take some data and then do different types of regressions on the data uh, through both graphing calculators and Desmos. So we're going to use exponential regression and logistic regression and compare them. So if you have a moment, I suggest you pause the video and go into the uh, video description. You'll see a link to this document. You can scroll through, try the questions out, think about what they're saying, and then press play and we'll solve them together. Okay, so first of all, I suggest you take data and just paste it into Desmos. And if you have it in a spreadsheet, you, you can do that relatively quickly. Here's Desmos, if you just paste it, it will actually put the data right in. Now, the, the goal here is to actually not enter in X values directly as they appear. That might make your regression a little bit less reliable. So there's usually some kind of um, way of rewriting the years. In this case, we're saying years since 1800. So for example, 1900, well, that's 100 years after 1800, so I'm just going to type in 100. And then 1950 is 150 years, and so on and so forth. 1960s, 160. 1970s, 170. 1980s, 180. 1990s, 190. And then 2001 is 201 years after 1800. Sometimes the thinking is um, you want to go back to a point in time, let's say 1800, got the Industrial Revolution happening, that might be more representative of current trends and population growth. There's usually some kind of reasoning like that. Um, so that's what it looks like in Desmos to get the data in. And then let's do our regressions real quick so you can see them. Um, so once you type in the, your data or once you have it in, you can do a regression. I'll call this Y1. And then if you type in Shift and then the tilde button, which is right next to the 1, that will get a regression going. And then you just enter the kind of model or equation that you want to use to model this data. So on this sheet, we're talking about um, exponential re regression. So I'll do A times B to the power of X1. I chose X1 because that's what the data is called right here. You would choose X2 if this is X2, and so on and so forth. And that's why this is called Y1. Y1 is the outputs here in the table. All right, so I don't see anything, right? So let's go find our data, go home. Okay, there's our trend line, but we need to go to where X is 100. I'm going to hold Shift and kind of shrink this down. Where There we are. But the output here, you can see the model, of course, is not crossing necessarily any of our data points, but it's trying to get really close to them. And that's how the exponential regression fits our data. We can now do the same thing for logistic. Type in Y1. And again, it's Y1 again, only because that's the outputs here in the table shift tilde and then it depends what regression model you're going to use uh, maybe a typical one we'll do c over one plus a times e or just type e to the power of negative k x and then it's still angry because i have to type a one in there right x one is um, again the inputs here in the table and then just to get the third model in we'll do y one and oops tilde and then same equation pretty much except uh, another version of it you might not be using e as a base so you can type in a b to the power of x1 and you can see if i kind of flash that off it's very close maybe almost it looks like exactly close to the other curve there so it's just the same equation as we had before but written in a different style so those are our regressions. That's how you do it on Desmos. Let's hop over to the graphing calculator. Okay, so I the first thing I want to do is enter data. So I'm going to go to Stat and Edit. And it looks like I have some old data values in here. So just press Up, Clear, and Enter to clear them off and Enter. And this process is a little bit slow, and I would have to t kind of toggle back and forth between the table and um, on my graphing calculator and the other image. So I'm just going to speed this up so you can see exactly what it looks like. All I'm doing is now typing in the numbers. Okay, so I have all that data, and now I want to do my regression. So I'm going to press Stat again, go to Calc, and you'll see uh, REG for regress regressions. You have linear, quadratic. The one we want here, exponential here, is choice 0. I'm going to scroll to 0. You could just type the number 0, but hit Enter. Now it's telling you, first of all, where is it getting the data from. In our case, list 1 and list 2. And we'll skip the frequency list. We don't need that right now. 
This one I recommend doing, you can take whatever equation you're given and store it as a value in the graph here. So you don't have to retype anything. If you go to variables, y variables, function, then you can choose which one you want it to represent. So I'll pick y1. And if that doesn't make any sense, hang in there, I'll show you what I mean. And then just calculate it. Okay, so it gives me a regression. There's my a and my b value. And uh, what a lot of students might do is write this on paper, all these digits, and then go over to y equals here if they want to see it as a graph. But because you stored it, it's right there already for you. It's waiting. So if we go to the graph, we can see it. Um, and again, um, you want to make sure that you have a, a visual of the graph. So, okay, I have my x min is at 100. I like that. The max is at 200. But clearly the y max was not hitting values that we need to hit. And we know it's got to hit at least 101. So I'm going to, I'm going to just go up to 200 and let's say 50 to see what it looks like. And there it is. Now, if I want to see the actual data points, I can go to stat, excuse me, a second y equals, and that will get me the stat plot up here. So right now we're on plot one. I just want to turn on the data points that I entered. It's off right now. I want to turn it on. So just hit enter and then go back to the graph. You don't need to save anything. And again, you'll see how the trend matches up with the data points. And then repeat the process, but with logistics. So go over to calc, logistics of stat, calc, and then choice B is logistic. And again, we want to store this. So we'll do variables, y variables, function, and I'll save it now as equation two because I don't want to erase what I had before. I find that this takes a little bit longer. It might spin up here for a little bit. And this will give me a logistic model um, based on the same data. So the interesting thing, I don't, I'm not sure how to do other types of logistic models. This seems to be the standard equation, and there's the e power of E. And instead of a K, they have a B here. Those are our A, B, and C values. And if I go over to the Y equals, okay, there's my model logistic. There's my exponential model. I can go to the graph and see everything. There's the, the exponential, there's the logistic, and um, we're ready to kind of start answering questions. So let's do that. All right, so it says, Question one, on your graphing calculator with exponential regression, uh, what are the values of A and B? Round your answer to the nearest 10,000th. Okay, so let's go to the graphing calculator. We have those values right here. Here's A, 1.10,000th, um, 10,000. So here, it's 1.4017. That's the value of A. And then we've got to scroll over for B. Okay, getting there. So, okay, 10 hundred thousand and then 10 thousands. Let's see, okay, so it's a seven there. So it's 1.0213, that's the B value. And, okay, uh, using Desmos, what are the values of A and B? All right, let's go take a look. So here's Desmos, zoom in. Okay, so A is 0.75. Oh, six, oh, ten hundred thousand, ten thousands, so point seven five oh six, and B is one point oh two four uh, nine five, so it's going to be ten hundred thousand, ten thousands, it's going to be point oh two five, right? This nine rounds up to a ten. And the, the questions there are answered just directly by looking at the equation. Okay, logistic, what are the values of A and B on the graphing calculator? So again, you just go over to the graphing calculator. So it's 233.9, so all sevens here, right? 10 hundred thousand, 10 thousand, so it's 0.9378. And then that's the value of C, excuse me, that's the carrying capacity. We want the values of A and B, let's go over there. So in the graphing calculator, <laughs> if, you, if you kept track of what the variables were, right? A is this number here, so it's 1420.24. Ten hundred thousand, ten thousand, two, four, five, seven. That's the value of A, and then this they call this B up here. Now the model is saying the opposite of whatever B is. So ignore that negative sign. The B value that we're actually using is just the positive value of this of this number. So it's point oh three five oh six, right? Ten hundred thousand, ten thousand. So point oh three five one will be the B value. Okay, 
moving on. Uh, using Desmos, what is the value of K? Sometimes it's called the growth factor. Um, and that's the B value we were, we were looking at in the previous equation. And notice um, here on Desmos, it's 0.0351. It's the same number the calculator gave us. So it's giving us a very similar result. OK. Um, OK, if you change the logistic uh, regression model to this, what is the value of A? And OK, so in this model, the value of A is 1420.26. And it's the same thing here. Because again, it's still a logistic model. Um, and whether we specify the base to be E or something else, it's trying to fit the data the best. And I think it's a simple way of thinking about why those numbers would not change. OK, I don't need that. OK, moving on. OK, in 2023, the actual estimated population of Mexico is 126.7 million. Which model best approximates this population? So we just want to know um, which of them, if we look at the year 2023, gets us the closest to 126.7. We don't want to delete that. So, okay, so I'm going to keep track of them. I'm just going to write this down. I have a pen in my hand. So one, I'm going to write down 126.7. And let's just go through each model. And we're looking at the year 2023, and we're looking at that since 1800. So that's, what is that, 223 years after 1800. Why is that important? Okay, so on the graphing calculator, go to graph. What we want to do is we want to enter in the value 223 and then see what the model, uh, what these two models predict for an output. So I'm going to go to second trace. And here under value, we can enter 223. Right, that's the year. So um, that's 223 years after 1800. And this tells me um, two things, right? Red blue, what are the predicted population outputs? So I'm going to scroll up here for exponential. I'm going to write this down. I can't write on the screen because I don't have my pen with me to write. I apologize. So it's 153.21, uh, 7.42. I'm not going to round it all right now. I'm just going to keep it precise. For the logistic, I'm going to scroll down. It's 148. So it's a better estimate, 0.91026. All right, we're trying to get to, um, if we go back to the question, we're trying to get as close to 126.7. So right now, um, the 148 is definitely closer, right? So I'm going to ignore the first one. Now, if you don't have colors here, you can actually um, go back to the y equals and then hide a graph. If you go over the equal sign and hit enter, OK, then you go to the graph. It'll hide the other graph. So if, if, so if that confuses you, you can't toggle between them. You can always turn gra graphs on and off by hovering over the equal sign and then pressing Enter. And that will allow you to hide them up from the graph. All right, let's go to Desmos here. Uh, Desmos is right here. OK, so what I want to do is I want to um, basically find what these graphs heights are at the same at the same x value. So I'm going to um, I think an easy way to do this might be to, just to uh, enter the equation for a vertical line um, at 223 and then see where they cross. So here you can see those two numbers. And um, this is saying okay so this is saying that the two population outputs are 182.93 that's exponential that's way off and then the from the 126 that we want. And this is 148.91, which is basically exactly as close as the other one, at least to the nearest hundredth. So it's just as accurate. And if I kind of hide this graph here, you can see it doesn't matter if I'm using the base of E or another base. It's still giving 148.91. So we have our answer there. Let me go back to this one. Uh, which model uh, from number one through six? So the logistic models are giving a better approximation. That's what I would say here. OK, how far is the estimate uh, from the model in question four? Uh, question four, that's this model right here on Desmos. OK, from the actual uh, population, rounding errors to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to say um, 148.91, right? 148.91, go back to Desmos here. I'll just do the calculation right in this box, 148.91. That was the projected population minus 126.7. It's 22.21 million off, right? That's 22.21 million. So that would be my answer here uh, for number seven. For number eight, according to that model, what will the approximate population of Mexico be in 2050? 
Okay, let's check it out. So here I've got exit 2023. Let's go to 2050. It's saying 191.507. So 191 million people. Wow. So that's the answer here. According to the same model, in what year will the population reach 160 million? Round your answer to the nearest whole number. So if you want to answer that, population is this y-axis, right? So I just want to graph um, y equals 160 and then see where it meets the logistic curve right here. At what year? So 229.035. So 229 years, so that's the year 2029, right? 229 years after 1800. Um, let me go back to the wording of this question. Uh, in what year will the population reach 100? So it has to reach 160 million. So I, it has to be, um, it's after 229 years. So it'll be between the year 2029 and 2030. So I have to work on the wording of that question to clarify it. Um, I would say at the beginning of the year 2029, you won't have reached 160 million, but by the end of the year, you will. So I would say 2030, actually. But I'll work on the wording here. I don't think it's very clear. Okay. What does the model... This is a question I started to write but gave up on. Delete that. What does the model from question 4 predict to be the carrying capacity? Okay, so um, C is the, the carrying capacity of the logistic functions. It's the upper bound. It's a number we're approaching but not reaching. So I'm going to zoom. It's 233.937. So I'll type that in here. 233.937. And there's a lot going on in this graph. Let me hide the things I don't need. And I don't need this vertical line right now. So this line right here is an upper bound. And the logistic function essentially approaches that upper bound but never quite hits it. So um, the upper bound here is saying that um, if, if Mexico's population continues to follow this trend and the logistic curve is right, it will taper off as it approaches 233.937 million um, if what the way the population is growing is actually based on the environmental factors that will limit that population, right? Um, the, human, uh, the human efforts to expand in Mexico might not actually match the actual environmental limits on that population. So the true upper bound of Mexico could actually be a lower number. So we might at some point hit our carrying capacity um, and have to do a sudden stop in population growth instead of continuing to grow as our current trend suggests. Because maybe the population can't really, uh, the environment and the technology we have at the time can't handle uh, an actual carrying capacity of almost 234 million. All right, so don't want to ramble too much. So two, over 233 uh, million, and clearly I have to write in here what to round to, but I'll leave that out for now. In what year does the model predict we will be within 1,000 people of Mexico's carrying capacity as predicted by the model in number four? All right, so um, we go back. So the model says this many million. So within 1,000 of that. So what does that mean? Let's write this out. Y equals, I'll write down this number, 233,937,000. Thousand is the actual number this represents. So I'm thinking within a thousand, I can lower this seven to six thousand, and then that means I'm looking at this number here, two hundred and thirty-three point nine six. So that's the intercept value I'm looking for. Let's see if I can get it. And it's kind of interesting. You see that it gets so close. Do these two things meet? Yep. So even though I couldn't see the intersection point, let me go back here. Just zooming a little bit, if I kind of hover, it'll start to show where they meet. So there it is. So look at that. Like the, This growth right here is so slow. And if it actually follows that path right here, um, even though we might be zooming up right now, the population rate gro um, growth rate slows so much that it would take f a total of about 573.123 years after 1800. So right, that's, that's, that's 1800 plus, what was that, 5, there it is, 573, 573.123 years. It'll be the year 2373, um, so I'd say 2374 by the end of that year. We'd get there. Amazing. Okay, imagine that the predicted carrying capacity for Mexico is 200 million. 
think about why this might be um, different from the carrying capacity predicted by the model. When will the when will Mexico reach this population? So I was trying to allude to earlier that um, the actual carrying capacity of any environment in which humans live might not match the projected uh, time at which population will slow down. Because in other words, we are growing faster uh, than the environment will allow for. At some point, uh, we will hit a natural, uh, the actual carrying capacity. So our curve should be something like, maybe maybe like this, right? We're slowing, we should be growing at a slower rate, but, we're, but maybe we're not. Uh, and this is where it gets, I think, interesting. So that would mean that at 257.6, so in 2057, 2058, somewhere in there, um, you you would hit this carrying capacity, um, and we don't, that means we don't ac actually reach the actual projected carrying capacity of our current rate of growth. So there's a lot of interesting things to unpack there, uh, and I hope you got a sense of how this works on both graphing calculators and Desmos. Um, all right, thank you so much.